What I also could have done, which would probably have been a better, for sure, better option. I just was scared. If you're into Subaru's STIs specifically, there's a good chance you like the older ones more than the newer. But you would prefer a newer car, maybe because it's your daily like it was for me when I got this one. Maybe you just like to have newer things. But the newer ones don't really just have the same feel as the older ones. Since I'm buying the newer one because it has lower miles and it's my daily, am I going to regret not buying an older one and then having to put that work in up front to make it more reliable? Or will I be okay with this purchase buying a newer one and not really look back? This is really hard to assume and figure out without having a lot of time behind the wheel to decide and really see for yourself. Three years later, I'm able to answer this myself and feel confident about this topic in general. 2018 in January, I bought a 2015 SDI. Fast forward to May 2021, recently I bought a 2005 STI. I had quite a bit of time behind the wheel to understand the car and the real differences between these two. The thing about STIs is they're not a car that you can know a little bit about and get by. A car like a GTI, a Focus ST, even a Mustang, dependent upon what you do to it, if you don't do too much modifying, you can kind of know a little bit, have most of the majority of the work done, maybe fix some minor problems yourself and be good. With the STI having Ringland failure very common, it forces you to learn a lot of things because then you want to upgrade stuff and you have to learn about fuel systems and you have to learn about Ringland failure then you have to learn about break in oil and you have to learn about components of an engine rods pistons rings ring gap crank camshaft timing ignition boost pressure aftermarket turbos what size there's so much to it it's not a bad thing it's just are you in a place where you are ready for that do you have time for that something to consider. Back in 2018, I really wanted an older one, but the only real reason I bought a newer one is because I had zero clue what I was doing with cars, and it was my daily. By the time the motor was gonna have issues, I knew I was gonna be okay with it, I'd be more mentally ready for it, I would have more knowledge, and I wouldn't have to panic. Having a newer car with lower miles gives me a little time to drive it, not modify it too heavily to the point where I need to worry about something happening like Ringland failure. Comparing the two, the wheelbase is 4.3 inches longer on the 2015 model. That does make it a little bit easier to handle when it is loose and you don't have traction. As far as the engine goes, nothing major has really changed. The transmission does have longer gears in the 07 and up models. You don't realize how much nicer the longer gears are until you drive one. That's like an 04, 05, 06. They're really short and you don't really think about it until you hop straight into a newer one. So I wouldn't stress about it, but I do prefer the longer gearing. The interior, simply put, is a little bit cozier in the 05. I like how the seats feel. They're more comfortable. But the 2015 does have a more luxurious feel, the leather, the space in between you and the passenger. It's just a bigger car, but I prefer the 05 by far with the interior. The seating position in the 05 style is a ton of visibility out the front. It's almost like you're sitting up in like a giant fishbowl. You can see the left, right behind you in your peripheral. You have the big old hood scoop that you're staring at. Um, it doesn't feel very sports car-ish from a seating position standpoint but it does let you see a lot of what's in front of you and you can kind of push the limits of when you're driving because of that. People who are used to two-door sports cars, they hop in a Impreza like this and they go, you can see everything, you're so high up. The 2015 is similar, but you can sit quite a bit lower in the car if you want to. You don't see the hood scoop nearly as much because it's much more subtle and it's harder to see more of what's in front of you. But regardless, you can see a lot in these cars. When you have a four-door sedan where you're sitting higher up than compared to a lot of the two-door coupes and sports cars, these are very comparable, but the 05 has way more room to just see around you, and it feels like you have more going on in your peripherals, and you're not so much focused on what's directly in front of you. The 2005 has a hood scoop you can see through the windshield, very large. The wing looks cool out the rear view, just like all the other ones do, but it's a little bit more prominent in the older one. 
that body style is what I grew up drooling over at an extremely young age, around like eighth grade or fifth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, middle school. It's narrower, a lot narrower feeling, and you're sitting close to each other. It's more cozy. The blue interior is more vintage, has a very vintage feel. It has a certain smell, and some of the rattles just kind of... When you think about these cars, I feel like these older ones are just the peak of modern versus vintage roots of Subaru. While the older ones, you kind of lose that with the leather seats, the infotainment, it being bigger, slightly heavier. The newer ones, in my opinion, kind of feel like a boat, and these older ones feel much more nimble. Some of that has to do with seating position, visibility, but simply put, the older ones have a more unique driving experience that a lot of people are not used to. Just by sitting in it and driving down the street instantly, they kind of understand this is different and I see why people like this. For instance, my dad is into cars. His first car was a 77 Camaro Z28. He's not real into it later in life. I mean, he is, but he hasn't, he doesn't really have a car. He just has a truck and he's had that for as long as I've grown up. And I bring home the Mazda Speed 3. I bring home the 350Z. I bring home the Focus ST, GTI, the Mustang GT, all these cars and he, he enjoys them. But when I brought the 05, home <laughs> to show him what it was like let him drive it he loved the thing he told me right away you can't take parts off this car you got to keep it yada 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 I tried we it didn't really work out the more and more I looked into it the more I realized that I got a really really good deal on this car and it would literally cost me more in parts except we're gonna dive into that more later but back to the subject my dad loves this car and I think that has something to say about these because of all the cars I've had around he's never really lit up at like the experience this one brings and he thought it was unique and it was kind of vintage feeling and he knew I liked it growing up and he saw them on TV with me obviously so there's something about these that is unexplainable until you ride in it and everyone that's ridden this is totally in love with it. I will find a Hawkeye and call it good one day and have all the generations, just so you guys know, because I know you guys are really bummed about this car going away. If I could go back in time, I wouldn't change my decision because of my situation. I had just moved here. I was just making enough money to afford something like this. I had a daily driver that I needed, which this was my only car. I didn't really know much about working on cars yet especially compared to today. So if something went wrong, I would not have been mentally prepared or vehicly or financially prepared to come up with a solution to have a vehicle to get to and from work every day. If I were the person I am today and have a second car and have time to work on it, have the knowledge to get it done, maybe I can't do it all myself, but I know how to do a lot of it and I know what to get and I've experienced it, I would definitely go back and buy the 05 first and then just be done. Or 06, 07, just that body style. What I also could have done, which would probably have been a better, for sure better option, I just was scared of learning how to work on these. So I should have bought a daily driver, the Honda Accord for a couple grand, and then went and took my money and bought a Hawkeye back then, or a Blahby, either one and then built that on the side. But at 20 years old, I was so concerned about having an STI and having one that I could drive a lot, I just went and bought the newer one that could be my daily driver. So if maybe you're out there and you're in that situation and you're worried that you might like the older ones, I would personally have two vehicles, one super cheap daily, and then the Subaru you know you'll want to keep forever. They're only getting more rare by the day Parts are getting harder to find. And in retrospect, it's not that hard to find parts. It might be kind of expensive, but five, 10 years from now, who knows what it's like. So going with the cheaper car and the one that you want might be a good move financially for the long haul. But if you're coming from the situation like I was in where you're just, hey, I want an STI. Hey, I'm not gonna be too, too picky. I just want it now. I want a daily driver reliable they are relatively reliable if you just throw a cap back on them don't tune them or heavily modify them maybe you can do like a, a simple you know dyno tune for 91 octane here out in arizona that'd probably be the best move so that your dam stays at one and your car doesn't 
pull timing too much and have a bunch of problems because the fuel quality is so much lower here in Arizona and other places like this. These cars are great regardless. They do have the same motor, the same sound, a very, very similar experience, nothing to really trip about. But if you had to pick, I would personally go with the older ones for the whole experience of it. I hope you feel comfortable in making a decision. Maybe I can guide you to making the best decision that you won't regret because if I can go back in time, like I said, I would probably have the daily driver and I would have had one of these. I will never get rid of my 2015 because it is a piece of nostalgia for me because that really helped my channel get to the next level and really motivated me and I just kinda grew a very close attachment with that car. I'll never be able to like handle giving that one away. I hope this helps any of you guys out there that are questioning this subject. It can kinda be a lot to think about when you're about to spend a lot of money. If you're new here, my name is Cameron. We're all about building confidence in the garage. That's what the brand Karma Speed is about. Check out karmaspeed.com, grab some high quality apparel. We have some resources on there as well for you guys as car people. You can check out Karma Speed Podcast. We're talking to a lot of automotive content creators, people in the industry and things like that. I love sitting down, chatting with people and just hearing conversation about what they might be up to or things that you know we could take away from them and learn from each other. So check out that in the description as well as our Amazon list. Thanks so much for stopping by. Hope you guys have a good night, day, week, wherever you're at. Take it easy.